So I'd like to uh, ask uh, Professor Monica Bocchia, who is uh, uh, our next speaker, and she is from the University of Siena. She is an hematologist. She is professor of hematology at the medical school and also at the uh, master's degree in medical uh, uh, biotechnology. And uh, uh, Monica Bocchia will uh, uh, speak about preparing the doctor of the future medical school and program evolution. Okay, thank you very much uh, to everybody. I would say we go down to earth now, okay? Because we're talking about medical school. So what's today? I, when we prepared this uh, talk, I thought that we have to have a vision. So we have to ask ourselves, preparing which doctor of the future? Who is the doctor that effectively meets the health needs of modern society? And here are the competencies we thought are the most important one. Professionalism has to be a real good doctor. Communication skill has to talk with patients. Collaboration has to collaborate with colleagues. Management, today I, I know by myself that managing is very important. Health advocacy, scholarship. And these are not just competencies that we thought by ourselves. These are practically the competencies that the CANMED uh, Rose uh, framework uh, decided to take in consideration when we talk about a medical expert. You see already in 1996, although this uh, uh, expertise were revised in 2005 and the last update is October 2015. As you can see, a medical expert is a professional, a communicator, a collaborator, a manager, a health advocate and a scholar. But we also think that all these competencies, they have to be framed into a strong ethical values. And <clears throat> that's why we have a mission now. The mission is to become, or to, to have our students to become very good doctors. And that's what the medical school is uh, hopefully going to do. And one sentence that could probably reassume what we think about having a good medical school, is to be able to have an adequate core curriculum able to teach and assess the core competencies in a way in which core curriculum and core competencies are influencing each other. And which are the materials and methods that we have in order to cope with this vision and with this aim. Tools of teaching and tools of assessment. And if we go back to the competencies, probably we all know that here we are pretty good mainly in professionalism and in teaching and assessment professionalism. But I have to say that probably all these other skills are less uh, thought. And in fact, we need new tools and new topics to teach not only the professional skills, but also the so-called soft skills. So let's see what is Italian medical school current picture. We have a frame in which we have to operate. We have a legislative framework. And as you see, in 2007, the Italian Ministry of Education defined the class of bachelor degree of medical school, the magistral degree. And we have another frame. In 2013, European Directive 55 established the minimum requirements for medical school. So within this framework, what we have now, essential requirements to meet in the EU. Basic medical education should include at least five years of medical school, otherwise expressed in ECTS, European Credit Transfer System, or equivalents. In Italy, we use the CFU, University Credits or Crediti Formativi Universitari, and all these five years consisting of at least 5,500 of theoretical and practical teaching hours with or under the supervision of an academic institution, of course, our university. And how is the CFU system in Italy? The structure of the program, you see, uh, comprises theoretical activities for a number of CFUs, clinical practice, and a final work, a thesis. And the whole system adds up to 360 CFUs with a duration of six years. But we have many challenges in uh, Italian medical school. For example, we just heard now, 
keeping the balance between practice and theory. Of course, here, theory, I still put a book because I didn't know about him. Otherwise, I would have put a pad or, or a Twitter, but I put still the books because we think, believe that it's still important also to have some books. So we have to have a balance between practice and theory. Where are we in terms of Europe in Italy? Uh, as you can see here, our basic science and clinical science is more than other countries in Europe. So meaning, on the other way, that we have a little bit less clergy and practice, but we are working on this. In fact, I don't think it's bad to have enough uh, theoretical um, background. And as you know, Italian medical education system is based on a structure of a spiral curriculum and has, a, really has got a strong tradition of theory teaching. And I think uh, that many Italian doctors in the world have been knowledge to, be, to have a, a really heavy luggage of knowledge in medicine. So it's not bad to have a lot of theory and to know a lot. Of course, the, the ongoing challenge is to struggle to integrate this strong theoretical structure into a suitable practical activity because we cannot only think about what we have also to do. So what we are doing in order to cope with this uh, challenge and where are we going? Keep in mind that our goal is still the one we said at the beginning, to develop a medical education program in order to build up the doctors the modern society requires to answer their health needs. And we have many things to cope with. What we are trying, for example, multidisciplinary and interprofessionalism. Here the aim is to facilitate in the student the development of a multidisciplinary and interprofessional approach to the medical profession. Some tools that we are using already. Integrated courses that they are designed for creating connection between different subjects, also preclinical subjects, between different teaching methods, different clinical approaches, and so on. What we call clinical trigger is proposed in the early moments of the student pathway in order to create links between the preclinical and clinical approaches. It's a vertical integration. But of course, it's very important also to have an integrated teaching methods, able to create a horizontal integration within the topics. So we'll try. Another very important issue, a student-based medical education. The student has to be our target of new teaching methods in order to improve his awareness and skills, not only again in technical aspect of the profession, but also in personal development and behavior. And you see we have many settings in which we can work. Again, we think, we believe that integration with community, territorial and social environment has something very important for a medical student. The future doctor should be an actor of promoting health in every professional and social context. But to hold this role, he needs to develop ethical awareness of different social and environment aspects regarding health, health advocacy toward institutions, organizations, people, media, attitude to promote prevention and health. It's of these days, doctors are saying you don't have to vaccinate. I mean, this is not health advocacy. Introduction to the scientific methods, another really important aspect. So evidence-based medicine pills can be given during the ordinary courses. We have to promote scientific reading and writing practice. And of course, we can have many information, billion information, we have just said so, but we have to develop a critical approach toward the, the international literature. Otherwise, we will be overwhelmed by international, international literature. And again, as I said, we think it's very important integration with national health service for clinical practice activities. What do we mean? We try to develop a large and defined program of clerkship and clinical practice from the early moments of the curriculum. The students already goes out of the, of the university and goes toward the hospital. This is by implementing a tutorial system of teaching, employing modern techniques like problem solving approach and with a constant assessment also for practical skills. And we will go back to this assessment point in a minute. What do we think? We think that the clinical practice taking place in the context of both hospital and territorial care and this represents the scenario the student interacts with are very important and the overlapping of teaching situation and patient care environment may represent a unique chance 
to improving each other context and create a synergy. But again, we are still missing something. We are on the way, probably, but we are still missing something. And I just reassume in these three things, new tools, new topics, and focus on assessment. And what do I mean? New tools, new tools of teaching and assessing the competencies the future doctor is supposed to learn. What we need to teach, strategies able to refine students' professionalism. We want to have very good doctor, but also to promote other important skills we are less used to teach and assess practical skills, problem solving, ethical awareness. Do we assess for this? For sure not. These new tools are supposed to be useful in order to support the process of teaching, learning and assessment. For example, simulator-centered teaching and assessment. These are key points for the new uh, future of uh, medical school. And of course, in this context, what, we, what I reassume as I'm not an expert, but the expert is here, e-learning, e-teaching, e-assessment system are strongly required. But also, we need new topics to introduce in medical school. Sustainability, economics management, precision medicine is the future, ethic framework, human rights, health inequality, drugs production and regulation. Of course, we are not pharmacists, but we have to know all what's behind the drugs because we have to manage with it. Global health, gender medicine, and also, why not, climate change, environment and health. So new topics are needed in medical school. And why I focus on assessment? I borrowed this sentence, a little bit changed, by Albert Einstein. Sorry for that. But if we miss the assessment moment, we risk to vanish all the teaching process. So not only teaching, but assess if the student had learned. We need to focus on the necessity to assess if the teaching process and the curriculum program are able to foster in the future doctor, and now I want to say in the doctor of the future, those skills he is supposed to learn. And for doing this, I we went back to look at the Dublin descriptors we are, that are uh, being written about 10 years ago, and they suggest how to assess the outcome of the university in teaching programs by looking at what? The, the pupil, the student, has to have a knowledge and understanding in a field of study, but application of this knowledge and understanding in the occupational work context. Judgment independence and solving capa capability to work problems. Again, communication skills with peers, sub supervisors, and clients. And now I would say with colleagues, with patients, with relatives. Capability of independent learning and updating. If I know how to, how to study, I can keep studying. So how can we assess? We need a stru to structure a strong system of assessment, I think, able to check the outer outcome of the teaching process, what I could call the competences learning. When an interim assessment during and between courses and a final, final assessment at the end of medical school. So here we have another need, suitable tools and techniques that should be defined for assessing the different skills that we said students must achieve. So in my conclusion, we have a vision competences which are very important. We have a mission, which is medical school. Present picture, I think we have a strong structure in our university and a good theoretical learning. Present challenge are practical activity, multidisciplinary integration with community, as what I said, a lot to do. And I hope a very near future, new tools in learning, in teaching, in assessment, simulators, new topics we talked about, and assessment with suitable tools in order to check the outcome of medical school. Thank you for your attention, and thank you to Marie Messia. We did this together. Thank you.